Back in 2022, someone made a post on the r slash movie subreddit asking people about the movies that should never have a sequel, and I actually left a comment on that post, responding with 2019's Joker. Which by that point, Warner Brothers had already announced that they were making a Joker 2, but I still left a comment saying that I thought that was a mistake and the first movie never needed a sequel in the first place. And I don't want to say that I called it because it was honestly a kind of obvious thing. But maybe if Todd Phillips was on Reddit back in 2022 and saw that post, m m maybe we could have avoided this whole thing. And there's an argument to be made that, if we're being honest, most movies shouldn't get a sequel. We need to remember that all stories are always trying to say something, there's always a message that's trying to be expressed, and if a story gets some kind of sequel or continuation, then that new story needs to elaborate or expand on the themes that the original story was exploring in order to continue the narrative thread. That's when we get a nice, satisfying sequel, when it manages to add substance and complement what was originally being said in the first story. This is why sequels in general tend to be worse than the original, because more often than not they are continuing a story that didn't need to be continued in the first place, they are sequels without a purpose. And this is exactly what happened with Joker 2. There's a lot of flaws with this movie, but in my opinion, one of its biggest flaws is that the entire point that the movie is trying to make was already made in the first movie, making this entire sequel completely unnecessary. When we look back at the original 2019 Joker, one of its most notable aspects to it and kind of one of its biggest shortcomings is that it was very, very derivative. Since the movie takes major narrative and visual inspiration from Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy, to the point that it uses those films as a blueprint, turning it into a sort of pastiche of both films. The point is that both Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy do not have sequels probably because both movies served as character studies for their deeply flawed antisocial protagonists, and they had already properly deconstructed them in the original stories, so there wasn't any need to make a continuation. So if those movies they took as inspiration don't have sequels, then why on earth did Warner Brothers Discovery think that a sequel to Joker would work? There's a difference between a movie having influences and a movie being highly derivative of other films. The Dark Knight, for example, takes light influence from Michael Mann's Heat, and Logan took inspiration from the 1953 western Shane, but they didn't take those influences as a blueprint on how to structure their stories. They didn't explore literally the same themes and had the same narrative structure as their influences. Instead, they took those inspirations and crafted something wholly unique by combining those elements with a different narrative and new creative decisions. The original Joker movie played it safe by keeping itself restrained to the structure of the movies that inspired it, but it still managed to be a pretty good movie despite that, thanks to Joaquin Phoenix's fantastic performance, its great cinematography, and a focused message that it was trying to convey. And Joker 2, on the other hand, tried to be less derivative. I'll give it that. They legitimately tried to craft a new story from scratch, it's just that, unfortunately, the story they crafted is just bad. It's a bad musical, a bad sequel, and even if you don't compare it to the first movie, it's still a bad movie since its plot is insanely unfocused, badly paced, and it overall detracts from the first film's narrative. One of the biggest flaws you'll immediately notice when watching Joker 2 is the absolute character regression that Arthur Fleck has gone through by the very beginning of the film. Since throughout the first movie, we saw how Arthur went from being an insecure, lonely and deeply depressed antisocial man who felt completely ostracized by society after suffering years of physical and psychological abuse, to finally becoming uninhibited and truly free once he allows himself to become who he always wanted to be and do what he always wanted to do. He starts defending himself by attacking those people who had abused him and also those figures from society that he thinks have done him wrong. In other words, he started to act with more agency after mostly being a passive victim throughout most of the movie. But in Joker 2, all of that character development was reverted and taken away from Arthur's character right away. As soon as the movie starts, Arthur lost all of the confidence and self-realization that he went through and for the vast majority of the movie he goes back to acting as his submissive and insecure old self. There's actually a term for characters like this. Arthur Fleck is a clear example of a passive protagonist who has very little to no agency in his own story despite being the main focus of it. He makes no major decisions himself and just allows the entire plot to simply happen to him without ever taking real action. Throughout the entire movie he just waits idly by for his trial to begin and later the jury's decision. 
he allows his lawyer to make most of his decisions for him, even telling him what to say. He allows himself to be obviously manipulated and played by Harley Quinn. And look, as I mentioned previously, in the first movie Arthur Fleck was also acting pretty passively, but that was in service to the story. We had to see a natural progression from him being victimized to finally standing up for himself and lashing out against his aggressors and later society at large. But in this movie, there's no moment in the entire story where Arthur truly starts acting with his own agency. He just sits and waits for the plot to happen around him, which as you can imagine, makes the entire movie insanely boring. Above everything else you might hear about this movie, I think this is its biggest problem. The movie is just boring, uneventful, meandering, unfocused, and it purposefully wastes people's time. There's even a musical number that flat out says that this isn't what people want to see. Now I want to talk about the musical aspect of the movie. But before that, I'd like to give a spoiler warning. Since even though it should be clear that I did not like this movie and I do not think that it's good, I still think that a lot of you are probably kind of morbidly curious about the movie, so I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it. And I do recommend you see it eventually just to be baffled by it firsthand. Just don't watch it in theaters. It, you know, to send Warner Brothers a message, and also because going to the movies is expensive as hell. So, in hindsight, as soon as this movie was announced to be a musical, we should have realized that it was directly trying to piss off fans of the first movie on purpose. But since I'm pretty dumb and naive, at first I thought that a Joker musical could potentially work if done right. I immediately thought about Tim Burton and Sweeney Todd, since I believe that it's a great musical and a great movie about a dark, evil character. And Joker being a mentally disturbed person with delusions does give an acceptable excuse to see him fantasize musical numbers. So it's not that this movie failed because a musical about the Joker is inherently a bad idea. It's just that the Joker 2 is a bad musical. And I say this as someone who does genuinely enjoy musicals. La La Land, West Side Story, The Prince of Egypt and Disney animated movies. I watched every season of Glee. I even watched The Glee Project. And that's insane when I think about it, so believe me, Joker 2 is not good either as a movie or as a musical. Now to be fair, there were a couple of musical numbers that did thematically and narratively work for me. The Sony and Cher style musical number where Harley shoots Joker was fun. So was the song after they attempted to escape Arkham, and the song Joker imagines in the courtroom where he hits the judge's head with a hammer and later shoots himself were all good musical numbers in my opinion, because they did a good job at representing the character's emotions through song, serving as a visual representation of catharsis. But sadly, these are the only songs that I honestly sort of enjoyed, and even those weren't all that good. I mean, in reality, the movie is only a halfway musical since it doesn't even have an original score. Almost every single song in this movie is a cover of old pre-existing songs. They didn't bother to take the time in writing truly original music, but beyond that, every time they sing in the movie it just feels meandering, inconsequential, and without a real purpose. For the most part, there's no proper build-up or transition from the dialogue scenes to the musical numbers. The song Harley sings before she enters the courtroom, for example, is flat out bad because it comes out of nowhere. It's literally there just to waste our time. Speaking of this version of Harley Quinn, overall, I didn't like Lady Gaga's performance as the character. She felt really bland, uninspired, and lacking her charm from most other iterations. She didn't even attempt to use Harley's usual accents and mannerisms. The best way I can put it is that, if Lady Gaga would have been the first theatrical live-action portrayal of Harley Quinn instead of Margot Robbie, I do not think that the character would be as popular as she is today. I do think that the concept of Harley manipulating the Joker and using her as a villain of sorts does have potential, but the idea failed in execution. As mentioned previously though, I think that one of Joker 2's biggest problems is that it's absolutely unnecessary and it's a story that doesn't have a real purpose beyond doubling down on trying to clearly say that Arthur Fleck is a bad person that shouldn't be idolized and should pay for his horrible actions. The problem is that that point was already made in the first movie. Even though they explained why Arthur was the way that he was, the movie still showed him as being in the wrong, much like other similar movies like American Psycho, Nightcrawler, or Drive. The point was already made in the first Joker movie and it didn't need a sequel saying basically the same thing but in a much more childish, mean-spirited and sloppy way. I mean, we don't need to see a Nightcrawler 2 where they show Jake Gyllenhaal's character fucking lose his news recording business and go to jail. 
or a taxi driver too where Travis Bickle dies and finally gets what he deserves because he was a bad guy. That'd be stupid. That's why those movies don't have sequels, because they'd run the risk of being redundant when compared to the first installment. It's just a really, really dumb idea. It's clear that this movie takes pleasure in shitting on the first movie and the people who enjoyed it. It wants to put Arthur Fleck in his place and show him suffering the consequences of his actions. He literally gets abused by the Arkham guards to the point that they implied he was graped or essayed by them, which is a wild thing to include in any kind of story, especially if it's done so carelessly like here. It's just so bad. Even the fact that this movie basically confirms that Arthur Fleck isn't the quote unquote real Joker in his universe and is simply the person who will inspire the actual Joker later on is something that was already implied in the first Joker movie. This theory being confirmed, it takes away all the fun out of it and makes it lame. The fun about almost all good Joker stories is the ambiguity and multiple interpretations that one can have when analyzing them, but confirming something so blatantly like this is just uninspired. Again, this movie truly doesn't add anything substantial. And look, it does have a couple redeeming qualities. The cinematography by Lawrence Cher is excellent, Joaquin Phoenix's performance is still really solid, and I did like the 1940s inspired animated sequence from the opening. But this sequel just truly feels self-indulgent, the type of movie that feels justified in wasting people's time. It really deserves to be called pretentious. The first movie, while it was very, very derivative, it was still pretty focused. It knew exactly what type of movie it wanted to be, and it mostly succeeded in execution. That's why it's a good movie in my opinion. But this sequel just didn't need to be made. I did not want to see the Joker lose his virginity, especially in such a pathetic, depressing way. I could have gone my entire life without seeing the Joker literally lose his virginity and I would have been much better for it, for sure. Still though, one needs to ask, how did this happen? What went so wrong during the film's production that this was the final result? Well, I think that what we saw was probably the same result as what happened with Wonder Woman 1984. We all know that that movie was also pretty goddamn bad. And a lot of times, when superhero movies go so wrong, it's usually the result of heavy studio interference or having too many cooks in the kitchen as it were. Such as what happened with 2016 Suicide Squad, but it's been confirmed by the director herself, Patty Jenkins, that she actually had a lot of creative freedom while developing the film, mainly due to the first movie's huge financial and critical success, giving Warner Brothers the confidence in allowing her to work without having many people contradicting her and making the team think twice about certain creative decisions. So the result was a misguided, unfocused story that served as a poor sequel to a good first movie, which is pretty much what I believe happened here. Since 2019's Joker was a huge hit at the box office, which isn't all that common for R-rated movies, so there's a good chance that Todd Phillips was given complete creative freedom by Warner Bros. Discovery. That would explain why this movie managed to be one of the most self-indulgent movies I've ever seen. So yeah, just watch The Penguin. That show is so goddamn good, it's unbelievable, I swear to god.